Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about how to prevent anal fissures as gay people that love to take it up the booty. Anal sex comes with its specific set of consequences and one of those consequences is actually um, a lovely anal fissure. For those of you who are fortunate enough to not know what an anal fissure is, it's basically a lovely cut in your butt. It makes you bleed and it stops you from being able to bottom for about a month because you have to go through the healing process. I actually had the wonderful opportunity to experience a whole anal fissure a couple years ago. You know, I douched improperly when I was constipated and then I bottomed even though I knew that my butt couldn't take it and then I ended up bleeding for about a week and um, yeah it wasn't great. I've learned a lot over the years so today I'm gonna teach you what I know about how to prevent an anal fissure as a gay bottom because I'm just that nice. Before I get started, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're new here and please check out my full bottoming course at the links below. This bottoming course will literally help you prevent any anal fissures or any butt problems um, for the years to come. And please also check out my premium douche kits at the links below. The first thing that I wanna address that will help you prevent anal fissures as a bottom is actually your diet. Eat lots of fiber and a lot of protein. When I was first starting out as a bottom, people would be like, oh, fiber is your best friend. Like you should always be taking fiber supplements and fiber this and fiber that. And I'd be like, why is fiber so great? Like what's so, like, is he that cool, you know? To put it into like, five-year-old dumb words. Fiber is a thing in food that like collects your poop in a more solid and complete and like clean way. So imagine there's like waste in your system, right? From like eating and from all that stuff. If you eat lots of fiber, your poops will come out a lot more complete and a lot more like soft. You know how like when you're constipated, your poops are like super hard and it's really hard to poop in the first place? Fiber does the opposite of that. Like fiber helps you not be constipated at all. As a result, when you have a lot of fiber in your diet, you're able to poop more often. And when you do poop, you're also like taking a lot more waste with you. And so you're naturally just more empty and clean. Does that make sense? Because you're pooping all the time and because the poops collect a lot of waste, you're both lighter and emptier and just cleaner in general down there. And of course, because as a bottom, you'll be using your butt a lot, it's pretty important to keep your rectum healthy and light and just comfortable and smooth in the first place. You know what I mean? The protein part of it, I personally suggest to eat a lot of protein because I like protein a lot and because it gives me the most energy and like the most like supplemental nutrition that I need to build muscle mass and just be healthy in general. So it's kind of unrelated to bottoming, but that's just like my personal advice. The most popular foods that are rich in fiber are actually vegetables and fruits. So if you just incorporate a little bit of those every single day, you'll naturally have a fiber rich diet. You could also incorporate seeds like chia seeds and like nuts and grains and quinoa and stuff like that. Um, into your diet, those are also super high in fiber, but you know, it's up to you to do your own research as to what foods have lots of fiber and like which ones you like and which ones you don't like, because I don't know your specific preferences. Um, just look in the back of a box or like on Google and you'll see for yourself. Protein rich foods include meats and like tofu and eggs and things like that. So what I like to have and what keeps me clean and healthy, I would say like a typical meal for me would be like a box of tofu air fried um, with like Brussels sprouts or like salmon air fried with broccoli. Simple foods like that will keep you clean and healthy and help you prevent anal fissures. You may be asking like, oh Kevin, like what does this all have to do with like getting a cut in your butt? The one and only time that I got an anal fissure a couple years ago was actually, one of the reasons why I got that anal fissure was because I was feeling constipated for a whole week because I wasn't eating enough fiber and then I tried to poop it all out before I banged so like I was trying to push like these hard poops in my rectum together, which already caused like friction and like it caused things to not feel uh, great down there. And then when things weren't coming out, when the hard poops weren't coming out, I tried to douche. So like I put water, I like squirted water into like an area full of hard poops and um, that made me not feel good. And that led to me getting a fissure. Okay, so that's why it's relevant. It's also important to advise you to drink a lot of water because water helps regulate things in your body too and it helps the fiber do its job if that makes sense like drinking lots of water will help you avoid constipation drinking lots of water will help clean out your entire system and help you become more naturally clean the same way fiber does so basically fiber and water honestly the protein stuff that's just my personal like oh like look good but like 
mostly when it comes to bottoming, fiber and water, okay? Capiche? I touched on this a little bit earlier, but like the second tip that I have for you to prevent anal fissures is to be careful when you're douching. What do I mean by be careful, you may ask? So obviously, like I said earlier, if you're feeling constipated, don't douche. If you're feeling like there's poops in there that aren't coming out, don't just stick in an enema bulb and then like squirt water in because that will like cut the muscles down there if there's hard poops and then you're sticking like a foreign object in and things aren't feeling great, like it could hurt you, you know? Another thing that I have to let you know is I used to just stick this in without any lube whatsoever. Actually, it wasn't this bulb. It was actually like a worse one. This bulb actually has like a very soft tip that like it's fine if you stick it in without lube. I wouldn't recommend it, but like this is the one that I sell in my premium douche kits and these are actually really soft and bendy, but like sturdy, but that's besides the point. My point is I used to use this bulb that I'm sure you, you've seen this before. And if you know of this bulb, you'll know that the tip isn't very, isn't very bendy or very soft. It's actually hard plastic. So I used to just not put lube on this and just stick it in and like, it would obviously hurt. Like nothing will feel good without lube, okay? And um, there was this one specific day when I was constipated and I just stuck this in without any lube and it cut me and it made me feel horrible and it made it, literally I could not poop or bottom for like a month. So my suggestion is to definitely put lube on the tip. I don't recommend this bulb. I definitely recommend my own premium douche kit, link in description, but basically, you know, put lube on the tip. It's not that hard. You just put lube on it and then it helps the insertion process to go into your butt. It helps it like go in a lot more smoothly and a lot more easily. Um, it also like helps you avoid any injuries and obviously, anal fissures. Also, while we're on the topic of like sticking this in, don't put it in too deep. You only need to put in like an inch at most, you know, like the water will still go in. So don't worry about that. Basically, just be careful with douching. Like use lukewarm water. Don't put water that's too hot because if the water is too hot, you could burn your butt down there and things will get more sensitive. Don't over douche. Like don't go past like five rounds. If you like douche like 10 times in one night all the time, like you could actually like remove some of the healthy bacteria that lives in your butt and that could like make you more prone to injuries and STDs and stuff. So like, just don't overdo it. Lukewarm water, put some lube on the tip, make sure you're not constipated, douche like five times at most and you're good to go, okay? The third tip that I have for you isn't related to bottoming per se, but as humans in general, we should all be careful when we're pooping or like when we feel like there's a huge poopy poop about to come out we should not sit on the toilet and just like let it rip. Like that's how my friend's straight brother got an anal fissure. Like he kind of just had a huge poop coming and then he sat down and it was hard and he just tried to all out on the toilet. And I definitely really, really don't recommend that because even if you're not bottoming or banging through the back door through your booty, you still can get hurt from the way that you poop. When you're pooping, even if it's a hard poop or even if it's like, a really like you really need to go poop when you finally get on the toilet please try to like kind of clench your butt and let the poop come out of like a little bit of a smaller hole don't just let it like you know what i mean like i don't know how to explain it but like just try to imagine like this is your hole try to close it a little bit when you need to poop and when you're pooping like make sure that it's like you're kind of controlling how much poop comes out because if you let it all rip it's gonna hurt you it's gonna open up your hole and if the poop is hard and if you're constipated it will hurt okay don't do it okay the last tip that i have for you the fourth and final tip is don't continue bottoming if something hurts a lot or like if something hurts like crazy in the beginning and you know it's not like the feeling of like, oh, I just have to get used to it. Or like, oh, this is like the usual soreness that I have to feel after a minute, it'll feel better. If it doesn't feel like normal, don't continue bottoming. I understand if like the first minute hurts and you're kind of like waiting for it to pass because usually when you're bottoming, the first minute does kind of hurt and you have to just like let it pass and then it stops hurting because your butt like gets adjusted to the vitamin D. But like if it hurts like for a long time or if it's a pain that isn't, that you're not like familiar with, don't bottom. Like, don't force yourself to have anal sex if your anal vessel isn't feeling good. What I did wrong when I got a fissure was not only did I douche improperly, not only did I douche literally when I was constipated, um, not only did I not put lube on my tip, but I still tried to bottom that day. Like, that's the dumbest thing. Like, even though my butt was hurting and it was probably already bleeding, 
I just did not check right away. I still like let him put it in me and like obviously I stopped because I couldn't handle it. But like why did I need to let it go to that point? You know what I mean? Like the signs are signing. Like your butt gave so many signs, so many signs. You didn't read the signs. Exile Taylor Swift. But yeah, like, listen to your butt, okay? Like, don't listen to your heart. Listen to your butt. If it hurts, don't do it, babe. And that's pretty much how you prevent an anal fissure as a bottom. I can make a separate video on how to, like, heal an anal fissure and, like, how you treat it and stuff, but, like, let's let's prevent it first, okay? Like, let's avoid it in the first place because that shit isn't cute. And I literally bled for like three days. I couldn't poop and then I had to go to the doctors and then I had to like take fiber supplements and then I had to like make myself diarrhea every single day. And then I had to like finger myself every single day with a butt cream, which actually felt pretty good. But like I couldn't bottom for a month and I was seeing someone. So like it just wasn't, it wasn't good. So let's, let's prevent it guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm sorry that it's like a little all over the place. I do feel a little bit like hyper, I guess. I hope everything was coherent and I hope things made sense and I hope that like you understand like what I'm saying and things like that. Again, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. And again, check out my bottoming course and my premium douche kits. These will help you prevent injuries. And please also leave a comment um, asking me for what you'd like to see next or like if you have a question or like, you know, anything of that sort, I will get to you and I will make more content for you. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting me. I love you and I'll talk to you soon.